heal. You guys would be amazed at what's going on here in Louisiana. New Iberia's whole history is based on sugar. Iberia Parish is the largest sugar producing state in Louisiana, and Louisiana produces a lot of sugar. That industry shaped a lot of what the town is and a lot of what it's been. You have people who live in almost million dollar homes on the Bayou Teche in a walled, gated community, and with a wrist rocket, you could shoot to an area where people are living in poverty with holes in their roofs. You do have a very strong sense of segregation between the two. The tracks was a racial divide. The blacks were on one side and the whites were on the other side. You have projects on this side of the tracks. It's nothing like on the white side of the tracks. After certain times, you couldn't go across the tracks. You just knew if it was dark, you're not going across the tracks. When I moved to New Iberia, actually, I didn't really want my family to go with me. I was actually going to go to New Iberia first and then move my family later. Because once I got there, man, I could tell just walking in the community, you know, it, 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 was, it was so tense. He moved back to New Iberia, and I was like, why would you go back down there? But it was to be close to his daughter. I think his move to New Iberia was to show daddy, I can take care of my own. I can take care of my responsibility. Welcome to another powerful edition of Community Defender. I'm going to be your co-host this afternoon, uh, Sister Khadijah. Uh, our host uh, is uh, Brother Takuna, uh, Milana El Shabazz, and Sister Rashonda, uh, right here from Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, uh, this is a live segment. You can call us at 337-366-8951. When you do call, we ask that you call with intellectual or conscious comments or questions and none of that other type of buffoonery that some of you all like to do when it comes down to a good program. Uh, it is customary that before we address the community that we ask permission from one of our eldest uh, citizens that's in the house. And the eldest citizen that's in the house would be Mama. Mama is 80 years old. Mama, can you give us permission to speak? Thank you so very much. Well, uh, the show title is Corruption, Racism, and Election. Uh, this is a powerful segment. We want to go ahead and introduce our outstanding pa panel. Uh, to my right, you have Brother Takuna Milana El Shabazz. Uh, outstanding activist in the community, has been there for oh, over, over 30 years. As a matter of fact, I have uh, a copy of the Inequality of the Louisiana penal system. And this was Brother Takuna newspaper, The Rising Sea, yeah. in 1993. He gave us permission to speak about what was going on in our judicial system. This is in 1993, The Rising Sea. Uh, to, our, to Brother Takuna right would be Sister Rashonda. Sister Rashonda is an activist. She's also a co-host of the Janelle Shagwar open line program with Brother Jane, myself, and we're, we air on Wednesdays from 8, uh, Wednesdays from 9 to 11, from 9 to 11. To my left is 
the one and only uh, Mr. Victor White. Uh, Mr. Victor White is the one that uh, ha has helped a lot of us uncovering the murder of his son uh, by the New Iberia Police Department uh, uh, under under that, that the animal uh, Lewis Ackle under his uh, guidance, and at the same time, the the, the coward murderers are uh, Justin Justin Ortiz. Ortiz is spelled O R T I Z. Justin Ortiz, O-R-T-I-Z. And uh, last I heard, he was still working in Youngsville, Louisiana. Right. Uh, Brother Dono has been an outspoken uh, uh, activist also, as a matter of fact. You know, when you start talking about them dogs, when you start talking about corruption in the state of Louisiana, uh, they come after you. Uh, and really, you don't want to fight against somebody that don't have nothing to lose. We believe in speaking the truth, the truth to power. We believe in calling the animals or the disgusting, despicable human beings exactly what they are. We believe that you need to know these individuals, and that's why we put our life on the line. And Brother Dono has put his life on the line, and Brother uh, Dono ha has paid the ultimate cost. So, uh, so with all that started, we're going to go ahead and just, just kick it off right now, and then you could reach us at 337-8951. We are also streaming live at aocinc.org back, back with slash submit. aocinc.org back with slash and submit. Uh, 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 Brother Chikuna, uh, just, just start us off. Well... Those topics, corruption, racism, and election, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's not just a topic, that's the way of life mm -hmm. here in Louisiana. I'm certainly pleased to be here among uh, the other guests here tonight. Uh, I know all of them at the table, and I know that they all walk into the same light of truth and justice, you know, for our people. So I hope that as we begin, you know, the show uh, this evening, that uh, uh, we speak candid to the to the issues, but that we also, uh, on the end of the program, uh, that we have at least educated our people to the realities of some things that are kept from us systematically. And it is knowledge that is power if that knowledge is correct and relevant and we act upon it. So, corruption, wow, I mean, Louisiana is by its very nature, the way it operates is corrupt politically, socially, economically, and culturally. I authored the book Black I Am, Cajun Creole, I'm not, and we're going to get to that at some point in the program. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those forms of corruption, politics, and racism all wrapped into one um, as we explore these topics mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, again, I, I would hope that the callers and the viewers of this show would lend their comments and get involved. Ask us questions, and I'm sure there's no one here at this table that will hesitate in telling you the truth. You just simply ask the question and get involved. And uh, also, I forgot to really acknowledge Brother Jay and Brother Shaheed uh, behind the scene who, without them, this is not possible. Uh, we want to thank them both for their continued work in the community, uh, whether in the forefront, uh, behind the scene. We want to just thank them for being with us. Uh, uh, Mr. White, well, it's really it's really hard to kind of like even talk with you uh, because like uh, of the murder of your son. Uh, uh, we continue to, to feel uh, the pain. We continue to see uh, some of us. Uh, on Facebook, you continue to try to reach out. Uh, can you just tell us uh, why uh, haven't you given up with the fight for the murder of your son, Lil Vic, by Justin Ortiz, uh, the coward, and there's another one that was with Justin Ortiz. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, why haven't you given up? Well, uh, once again, I thank you all for having me here. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, the guests, I mean, we are definitely acquainted with one another, and I appreciate the help 
And also, well, one of the reasons why we haven't given up because of the fact that you all are still out there singing. You know, you're pushing it in. Like I said, Brother Jay, yourself, uh, Brother Broussard, and Brother Takuna, and Sister Lashana. See, here's the thing. You know, so so coming on, remember, it was, was y'all's strength that had us going on. See, because if it wasn't for y'all's strength, then I would have given up a long time ago. Uh -huh. See, so that was the fight. When we took it to the fight and uh, my life was threatened and our life was threatened. See, not only mine, see, the individuals that are sitting at this table, life, well, life was threatened just as well as mine. So, you know, that was the game. The ultimate strength was that, is that it's just us. And it wasn't just my son, you know, that you all showed us from the onset, from the day that it happened, yourself, Sister uh, Marjorie with NAACP and all of them that were standing out there the first time. Right while we were in Alexandria deciding what we were going to do, you all was already out there taking a fight, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that's why. I'm, so now, uh, uh, now I'm gonna, we're going to continue to fight. Like I said with Justin Ortiz, as he's still an officer in Youngville, and actually we put some stuff out there letting them know that y'all have a murder on your hands, and he's still out there policing. And that's one of those things that we're going. Uh, the ultimate fight is to be able to get those individuals that are actually con uh, uh, that commit murder. Remember, they could leave from one part of one department and go that's to the right. next department. That's see, right. So that's going to be right. part of this fight, mm -hmm. is we want to make sure that those individuals, that they're murderers. Mm -hmm. See, so it would be just like if I murdered someone, right, it's last, and I wouldn't be able to get a job nowhere doing, what, doing the type of work I do. Mm -hmm. So how is it that they're able to? Yes. So that's another reason why we don't give up. And then the ultimate reason we cannot give up is because it's still going on. You know, they're still that's killing correct. our black brothers, our black sisters. They're yes, still they killing do. people of color yes. and getting away with it, you yes. know. So, yes, so again, well, the thing is, so that means if we surrender, see, that's what I'm not going to surrender. If yes. we surrender, if we fall down and act like we cannot get up, you know, because we're resilient people. Yes, and sir. so being as we're resilient people, so therefore we need to show our resiliency. And so one of those things is, even though Louis Alka may not be able to run again, right, he still, his name still need to be out there because guess what, he's still living a life, but he took a life. Correct. You see, so being as he took a life, even though he could he run around saying he was acquitted, well, remember, that's man, but at some point, he's still going to have to atone for what he did oh, because yes. he was there. Now, he may not say it, but he was there on that scene, so he knew exactly what would happen. Yes, sir. So yet and still, so we're going to fight, and at least, hopefully, one of them do develop a conscience. Because I know it's kind of difficult, y'all, for them to develop a conscience. Mm -hmm. So, but if one of them will develop a conscience, they could come forward and say what happened, and we still will fight because there's others, you know. Yes, yes. There are others that happened down in New Iberia. There are others that happened down in Iberia, Paris, mm -hmm. happened right here in Lafayette, all. And in Louisiana, I mean, it is probably, but you Remember, since we don't have the big NBC, we don't have the big ABC. So, uh, uh, you know, so, so, so again, that's why we have to keep on shouting. We yes. have to use social media. We have to get out there and let them know that uh, my son's death is not in vain. Yes. And then we're going to continue to take the fight to them. And, you know, we're not worrying about what's going to happen. And, and as you're saying, so that's why we see the corruption. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, it's systemic. You know, and we understand that. If you go down and I be a parents, then folks are still afraid. Yes, they're, they're still afraid. There's mm -hmm. no reason to be afraid because if we could come together oh, yes. and we unite ourselves together, there's no reason to fear. They'll be fearing us. You know, but, but they know how to do it. They divide us. They still have us divided. Mm -hmm. and I said one thing y'all I have to harp on is, is that uh, uh, as a minister, uh, uh, right, we should be the first to come and try to mold and shape people, right, to get out here and stand That's for justice, right. social That's injustice. Right. Well, right. it should be our target. It should be our ticket, but it's not. We're divided because Louis Alcott got half of them in his back pocket. Mm, right. You see, and I just say that our election time, right, you see, mm. election time, we got those folks coming in our churches, right. how about what they're going to do for us and leaving a check for five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, and then they're walking out. See, so yeah. so at some point we're gonna have to stand up. See, so look, at it, that, that the corruption is even in the church, even in the black church today, yeah. and that that because you know they're not talking about how we're gonna change, and that's why I continue to fight because again, you know, there are some. But y'all know we're the minority when they come down and stand out here fighting because there aren't any pastors and preachers, well, let's be for real, oh, and standing out here right. talking about right, the injustices that happened Correct. in Iberia Pass. Correct. Because I was told by one of them, we just going to wait for the verdict. Why should we wait for the verdict when the uh, bottom line is, I'm telling you, I know what happened. I yes, know sir. that's my son. Yes, See, that son. was my son. So, you know, because remember the old adage, people say, well, uh, you can't say what your son or your child may do away from you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm talking to him twice a day, sometimes three times a day. I talked to him that morning. I was that on the morning. phone with him. So for someone to come tell me that's supposed to be a brother of the cloth, you know, so for someone to come and look oh, me yeah. in my face and say that, you know, that we're brothers in the poor pit, mm -hmm. to tell me, well, we're going to wait and see, see, you know, we're going to wait oh, and yeah. see what the outcome is. Well, that lets me know right there, well, you bought. Yes, indeed. You bought, you paid for. Yes, and you see, so no, I'm going to stand with you. See, the thing about it, I'm going to stand with you because whatever you believe in, then guess what? We're going to have to unify behind just that. Yes. I'm going to support you because you know your people. Mm hmm.
we should know our people. So yeah. that's why I still I continue to fight. Uh, like I said, not just because of my son, but I want to keep his name out there because I don't want them to ever forget. My that's son right. did not commit suicide. That's right. And you remember, that's the, yeah. that's the thing that they wanted us to believe. You yes. know, they, they wanted us to believe mm -hmm. that our people are so sick. But y'all remember that they always put that label on their people. Yeah. When they commit the mass murder, right, it's always that they had a mental defect. They had a mm -hmm. mental this, they had a mental right. that. But when it's our people, right, they're, they're, we're targeted as the worst of the worst. We're targeted as animals, you know. But yeah. yet and still, they see who the animals really are. So... So that's why, again, that's why we must fight to let them know that my son was a good child. My son was working. My son had money in his pocket. My son was getting ready to go to college. Well, you know, see, all these things that was going on, and you look at the, the other side to that, right, is that, that, that they wanted to, that's why they couldn't really demonize them. They wanted to demonize them like they did everybody else, the Mike yeah, Brown right. situation, right? Yeah, yeah. And the Tamir Rice saying they had a gun, young fella, right? See, so Eric Garner, you know, so we start realizing they tried to, de well, you couldn't demonize him. That's right. That's See, right. so what they try to say, like they normally do the planet drugs. Well, look at the 10 officers that are in, in jail. In right, jail. Right, well, uh, those, right those right cases now. that they had to throw off because of that, you know, so that we start realizing that no matter how it goes, we start understanding that they cannot, they, they cannot, we cannot let them yeah, tell us yeah. what the narrative is going to be. They cannot, we cannot allow them to, to narrate our own story because y'all know we know our story better than anybody. And so that's why we continue to fight. And one, uh, uh, I want to interject right here, and a lot of times I'll see people and they say, well, look, y'all need to stay off of that, you know, he going to get his justice uh, in, uh, in hell. Well, uh, our hell is on earth right now, and he needs to get his, uh, his hell on earth just like they gave us, uh, our, they're giving us our hell. Uh, Brother Donald. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am humbled and honored to be at this table with such intellectual minds, such strong willed and strong spirited black men and black women. Uh, I'm thankful to be here. Uh, when we talk about the topic corruption, uh, elections and racism, uh, as Brother Takuna alluded to, they're all intertwined. Uh, we know here in Southwest Louisiana, we know here in Louisiana, uh, that the system has been designed since Jim Crow, uh, since the first ancestor stepped foot on these shores in Louisiana uh, when they came here in bondage. When slavery ended, uh, systems were implemented, systems were institutionalized and put into place so that decade after decade after decade, those people in the African American community would have hurdles to climb. We would have hoops we would have to go through. We would have some of the poor schools in some of the poorest neighborhoods. We would have different entities in our neighborhoods that would disable us from achieving, quote unquote, the American dream. Uh, and those systems to this day are still in place. Uh, and because of those systems, uh, our community uh, has had to fight to get ahead. We have had to fight and claw uh, for the basic freedoms of being able to go to a water fountain without a colored sign or without a white only sign hung on it. You know, Sister Rosa Parks, of which this building uh, is named after, had to take a seat on a Birmingham bus in Baton Rouge before the Birmingham uh, boycotts. The Baton Rouge boycotts were successfully implemented in which Dr. King and the movement took it, the movement from Baton Rouge to Birmingham on a large scale level. Uh, but, you know, when we talk about this corruption and we talk about politics and we talk about racism, we have a voice as a people, and that voice is at the ballot. This election season, you're going to hear a lot of stuff from a lot of different individuals, but you have to do your research, you have to do your homework, and you have to know who that you can trust to do what they said they're going to do. It's a lot of politicians out there, white, black, and otherwise, that come around every four years, stumping around our neighborhoods, knocking on our doors mm -hmm. with their little, quote, vote cards, talking about their agenda, talking about their platform, talking about what they intend to do. And then year after year, every mm -hmm. four years after four years, That's election right. cycle mm -hmm. after election cycle, our neighborhoods and our communities uh, are, are, are socioeconomically disadvantaged, 
uh, we, our neighborhoods are, are, are we have a, a crime rate in our neighborhood that no one wants to address. Uh, we have economic disparities in our neighborhood. Businesses shutting down and closing and leaving in our neighborhoods. And there are no politicians with solutions to bring socioeconomic equity to our neighborhoods. No solutions to improve the educational system in our neighborhoods. No solutions to improve the economic development and economic disparities in our neighborhood. So when we talk about those, they're in a, intertwined, but we also have to address the politicians that uh, that may look like us, may talk like us, may come from the so same socioeconomic background as us, but what have you done for our people? What have you done for our community? You know, uh, the word says, if you show me, uh, if you show me your works, I'll show you I'll show you my work. Uh, how, how's that scripture mm -hmm. go, Rand? Uh, <laughs> if, if you show me your works, I'll show you my works by my faith and my faith by my works. So we have to understand that, you know, these people may look like us, they may talk like us, but check their track record, check their history. If they, have, if they haven't done anything to improve the quality of life in our neighborhood, the quality of life in our community, to fight for our people, uh, not afraid to speak truth, to power, <laughs> whether it may be a popular truth or an unpopular truth. You know, Brother Malcolm X said, I'm for truth no matter who is for or who is against. If it's for you and it's the truth, then it's for you. If it's against you and it's the truth, you have to bear and you have to understand that. So all we want, we want you to be truthful, we want you to be honest, and we want you to do what you say you're gonna do. If you said you can get something done for our people and our community, we expect you to do that. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and, and yes, and of course, we, with you and Mr. Kevin, we want to thank y'all so much uh, for starting the, uh, the recall uh, on uh, getting uh, Lewis Ack out of, the, out, of the, uh, out of his seat. Yes, uh, before we go back on, on uh, that venom, uh, Sister Rashonda. Well, today I just want to pretty much elaborate on Brother Donald's um, situation right now, what he was speaking upon. And I want to say right now that a lot of these politicians do have the solution. They just don't want to have this. They don't want to do anything about it because fear of their character being destroyed. But at this time, the hands are not into the politicians. We as a people have to come together and unify, and we have to go in the communities. Because by us speaking and just talking, we're not going to get anything done because the majority is the poor. Mm -hmm. So it's us that people that have knowledge need to go in the communities because right now it's very detrimental. We are facing a mass genocide, ethnic cleansing. Mm -hmm. We are facing, we have the criminal justice system against us. We have the um, medical uh, department against us. We have the ph pharmaceutical companies against us. So right now, I believe what we need to do is just unify because we can't keep leaning on the politicians in order to save us because they're not going to save us. Because you have to understand, once they do get in office, they're threatened. They're threatened financially, and they're also threatened by their, their character. So right now, as a people, I believe that we need to go and educate our own people, just like the Haitian mm -hmm. priest that I spoke to the other day. The only way to liberate a people is to give them knowledge and to unify them. And that's just my thoughts on the situation right now. Brother, Brother Jacuna, yeah, unification. Yeah. Well, let, let, okay. let me, let, let me, I want to... Okay. Off a couple of things I heard. Okay. First, I want to deal with Reverend White in terms of uh, some of the remarks he made in terms of his son and the death of his son and all the circumstances around that. Mm -hmm. Listen, he's right. It's happening now. You get shot as a black man sitting on your sofa eating a bowl of ice cream. Oh, okay, yes. now, what is on the issue today that covers corruption, racism, and election that most of us don't want to face the reality of? black man was killed in his own apartment by a white cop, mm -hmm. okay? Now, regardless of what other details that you might want to attach to it, I want to bring you to the courthouse because we're going to come back to this. What is so damaging, as Brother was speaking of earlier, we need to take issue with sometimes ourselves. But if we're going to fight an enemy, we got to identify the enemy, we got mm -hmm. to identify the tools that the enemy used to fight us effectively. Mm -hmm. Well, on the end of the trial, when the young brother was speaking mm -hmm. on behalf of his brother, death killed by the white woman, 
his need to go across the room and hug the perpetrator is part of the results of the tools that is used against us to make us docile and to make us so, um, uh, just so contrary to, norm to, to normality. Listen, this brother who went and hugged this white woman, the perpetrator, I don't doubt his sincerity. I don't doubt his sense of humanity. Mm -hmm. I don't doubt black folks' sense of humanity. When the, the, on the end of the day, when it's all done and said, it's going to be black folks' level of humanity that's going to be good for all of humanity and will set the moral standard. So I don't question that. But what I do question is this, very clearly. When that young brother went across and hugged the perpetrator, he didn't hug a white woman. He hugged the white Jesus. Mm -hmm. The white Jesus that is being perpetrated in these religious organizations that we have. Not the Jesus of 2,000 years ago. You see, we, we, the manufactured Jesus on the plantation that's been put in our mind. This is why we love our enemy more than we love ourselves. Now, I would take that gesture. I would take that gesture as sincere. I could take it and fly with it. If that form of Christianity that produces that kind of behavior in us would allow those churches, brother, those churches you spoke about, would have some type of forgiveness for each other. Mm -hmm. They'd have some type of forgiveness and sit down and pool their resources to feed our people, to clothe our people, to create businesses, using the multi-millions of dollars and billions of dollars that come through our community, through the churches. But these so-called preachers who teach that kind of Christianity, who teach that kind of Christianity, don't want anything to do with black people. Mm -hmm. They operate as cocoons in their own little church. So when I'm going to see black preachers that teach and manifest that kind of white-formed Christianity, and you want to lay it on a man called Jesus, which is not really his name, so you, uh, that should be a red flag that should go up. If, you, if, if Jesus is all that in the bag of chips in your religious perception of things, then why can't you call him by his real name? Because it brings you to another level of truth. Now that man 2,000 years ago is real and does have spiritual value for us. The Christianity concept is not a bad concept, Rev. Mm -hmm. But if that Christianity concept is the end result of your work is that kind of behavior, then I don't want no form of that kind of Christianity. I want the kind of Christianity you practice, brother. I want the kind of Christianity that gravitates your people toward righteousness and make them go to work. The kind of Christianity that creates a wall of, of, of resistance to anything that is wrong. But the kind of Christianity in which we function out of is a manufactured Christianity, a tool of slavery to keep us docile, to keep us helpless. Controls. This is why, not, 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 uh, yeah, to control us. And let me tell you another thing. i will give you another example how this Christianity works, because this is the biggest tool, you know, against us. Because right now we can't even talk to our people. No. We can't even talk to our people because of the religious uh, differences and persuasion. So if you're going to have so much forgiveness and love coming from this Christianity as the byproduct that affects your people, then why can't you sit down in you know, the churches? Now listen, you remember when there was a killing, another young killing, a black mother out of fear and love for her son, went irate on her son, beat her son on camera for going out there standing up like a black man. Yes, I remember. Oh. Yes, the I media remember. praised that mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. But that was a black woman with her form of Christianity, Ferguson, you know. Ferguson, yes, mm -hmm. and, and that, that form of Christianity and the fear and love of her son wanted her son to be docile rather than stand up like a man. That's right. That's if right. that form of Christianity is what's in our community, and I suggest that it is, I have no issues with Christianity because I understand what it is. Christianity is, 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 is a concept that one who follows the Christ is a Christian. The Christ, to be a Christian is one who's crystallized in the oneness of God. But the form of Christianity that we practice is a form that was given to us on the plantation, not to make us more spiritually correct, not to make us morally correct, but to make us, to make us more controllable slaves. And this is why the media is playing this thing up. 
So therefore, you can't talk to black people. They say, well, you know, that's a very loving gesture. Look how much we can forgive. Forgive your own people. I believe in forgiveness. But start at home. Mm -hmm. Forgive your own people. Forgive your own brothers. And then forgive those other Christians in these other churches and get together and pull your resources and do for your community. Now, that's the kind of Christianity I can buy. Mm -hmm. You see, I know most of us can't handle the Christianity that Nat Turner practiced mm -hmm. and preached. Mm -hmm. You see? But at least... But at least if you take that form of Christianity where you can start at home, forgive your brother, hug your brother, hug your sister, and then gravitate around the economics of our community and use that spiritual base to build for ourselves, feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, then I'm with you. But this kind of end product makes us look insane. In the name of Jesus, we're going to hug our perpetrator. In the name of Jesus, we're going to love our enemy more than we love ourselves. That's not even, that, uh, don't put that on Jesus. Don't put that on a God mentality. That's insanity. That's a, that's a modern day pervasion of, of, of slave behavior. Mm -hmm. And we as black people are arguing about the table, around the tables right now. And most of them probably just, two, three, just probably just fell off the table because of what I say. Mm -hmm. Because there's not a Christian thing to say. What Christianity do we know? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I say to all the points here, you know, that's the form of corruption. That's the form of racism. When, when a people can be so fooled that they participate in their own destruction, that's a heavy whipping. Mm -hmm. Now, and my last point is going to be quick. This whole concept of Christianity, what are we getting cranked up for now? We're getting cranked up for Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. now the Christianity is going to kick in again. We're going to give a few turkeys. We're going to feed somebody for a day. And we don't own the stores. We're going to go spend all of our money, buy liquor, all in the name of Jesus because we're giving thanks to God. You see? And then we gear up for Christmas, which is a lie, have nothing to do with Jesus. And then we live up and we gear up for Easter. This is how white folks perpetuate the control and utilize their tools on our minds. So this brother, who may demonstrate a sense of humanity that exists in us, and I believe in that, but brother and sisters, I submit to you and I submit to the audience that as long as black folks feel that their expression of humanity only comes from them proving that they can forgive white people with still modern day slaves. We are. We are. Mm -hmm. And to also add to that, I've also noticed that even in the prison systems, don't you know they do not give any, any offenders the Old Testament. They give them the New Testament, which actually just speaks upon being a good slave. Mm -hmm. So basically the whole goal is to pretty much emasculate the black male in any which way they can to keep us under control in fear of us uh, refusing to be docile and meek and remain docile and meek. So the whole goal is to take our aggressiveness because now they're also targeting the black woman. Because mm -hmm. everywhere you go, anytime there's a strong black female, they try to attack them economically physically, any which way possible they can. So when they realized that the black woman was actually the spiritual strength of the family, they started attacking her. Once they got the prison system filled, emasculated the black male, and did all of those things, now is attacking us, which is eventually is going to be a mass genocide. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and, and even even to that point, sister, right. notice that most of the Christian congregations right. are more than 80% women. Why? Yes. Because a black man feeling emasculated. Correct. You know, mm -hmm. gone into that environment. Mm -hmm. You see, and they use our women, and they use our natural spiritual uh, humanity to do good against us. Malcolm's mm -hmm. even said it. You know, right. there is no more loving, more and more caring, no more humane human being on the face of the earth than the black man and the black woman. Mm -hmm. And the enemy uses this against mm -hmm. us, and we fall for it because we don't know better. So I'm not saying that Christianity is a bad thing, Reverend. You know, and I know you know, I know, because we're, we're of one spirit. But you understand the difference between that kind of Christianity and the Christianity that make you stand up for the righteousness of your son, face the forces of oppression that you had to deal with for your son. And this, brothers and sisters, unless we deal with that reality, you know, all the other issues we're talking about, we can't even talk with our people. 
That's right, that's right. But uh, before we go any further, caller, you have a question or a comment for our distinguished panel. I just want to say that maybe our phone not ringing because your show is so powerful. I kept on going to touch the button to dial the number, and I'm like, Lord, I don't want to disturb them. But y'all, y'all sound so powerful. I want to know who the brother Takuna is. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. We well, yeah. we, uh, we have done several lectures with brother Takuna. Brother Takuna, he'll tell you. Um, I'm I'm a local I'm a local brother. I'm um. I'm competing for the elder in the room, <laughs> the oldest <laughs> elder in the room. Been around a while, sister. I'm, uh, I'm, your, I'm your brother, and uh, I'm unapologetically black and African. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, you're awesome, and um, thank you so much. I just want to tell you, I really have a powerful show. Y'all look so beautiful. Keep it up. Thank you so thank very, you. so very much. And I wanted to, uh, I want, yeah, this is a live segment. Call us at three three seven three six six eight nine five one. Or you could, uh, we are streaming live, and you could reach us at aocinc.org backward slash submit. I wanted to, and the title is Corruption, Racism, and Elections. I wanted to mention that uh, when Brother Donald mentioned that we are here at the Rosa Park uh, Transportation Center, this is where AOC is located, you really have to kind of like know exactly your environment and, and, and what it, uh, it curtails on the, uh, the, the building was dedicated on behalf of Rosa Park, you know, Lafayette Consolidated, consolidated Government. However, Rosa Park, um, the sculpture that done Rosa Park, he received $92,000 for doing the sculpture. He takes and he sends uh, $3,000 to the Rosa Park Foundation. So, you know, when we talk about corruption, this is a great uh, epitome of what corruption actually is. Uh, racism, uh, you wanted to, uh, to to hit back on on, on, on racism and, and elections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as we were saying, especially that, you know, that's the thing because uh, a lot of times we, we expect it to vote Democratic. Oh. You see, we, right. Because of who it is, or if it's a, a, a black man or black woman running, we just supposed to vote for them. You know, right. but yet and still, those are the individuals that do the most harm. That's right. You know, because they'll right. say one thing, and then they get in Baton Rouge, or they get in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., and the mm -hmm. very thing, they be, they they become uh, uh, customized with whatever's going on, so they become a part of their broken system right. as well. So they're not fighting for our rights. They're not trying to make any laws to change for us. What they're doing is they're going along to get along mm -hmm. because they don't want to lose the, the wealth and the power when that comes along with it. See, so when we talk about systemic racism, or we talk about racism, well, when we look at how has been done to us, but as again, look at the jail system. We have just mentioned that, right? Yes. Or oh, 98, what, 90 percent of our, the African American, what well, you're talking about, the male, well, that's right. what they did. They pulled the male out so the woman could try to raise the family, right? right? And then here it is, you got the African American woman trying to work two jobs at minimum wage to take care of house, and they know it's not going to happen. Right. So when we get uh, uh, the ultimate part of racism, well, they were getting free labor before. They mm -hmm. were like, when you look on the highways, who was doing it? Well, you even had the sheriffs taking them to their house, right? Remodeling their whole homes for them. That's right. You know, we had the governor at some points, you know, the governor taking them and letting them take care of their own houses, the mansions and everything. So the ultimate part of racism, right, if we're going to stand up against racism, once again, we have to come together. You know, uh, as you said with the scripture, how, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers can come together and dwell in unity. See, and that's the thing that we lack. See, so again, if we're going to defeat racism, we must first get everybody in the room and say that racism exists, as opposed to we have individuals running around talking about, well, you're a racist, I'm a racist, I'm, I'm like this, have you ever been oppressed? Uh -huh. Have you ever been oppressed? Or you want to tell me about me being a racist? Have you ever been oppressed? Have you ever been to the point right. where where you had to fight or struggle for a meal? Mm -hmm. You know, because we get some of our folk that that, that had a, have a silver mm -hmm. spoon, and then you look at the background and figure out how that came about. Well, again, you, if you participate and you act like it doesn't happen, then guess what? You're validating it. See, so therefore, we could talk about racism, but it's going to take all of us to get in here and start saying what racism really is. Yeah. Because once again, you know, if they could keep us quiet and keep our mouth shut, you know, that, that's how they get us. And you understand, because there are some of us, some of us understand that racism exists, and when you go to the courthouse, you see it all over the place, oh, and they want to tell you to be quiet. Mm -hmm. but don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't want to disrupt. And, you know, some will have the mentality, yeah, what if, if, if one of us come out of there, we've done something. Mm -hmm. No, no. We, we, we would do something when it's fair across the board, and we can understand that it exists, and we acknowledge that it exists. Yes. Most of the time, we have to do it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Just be quiet. Exactly. Carla? 
I'm sorry. I pressed two at one time. I wear eyeglasses for real. Yeah, and, 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 but, but, cool. yeah. I, I was saying when you go in the, and when you go in, in the courtroom, they would say, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah." The 16th yeah. judicial district. You know, one of the most corrupt systems in existence. And then you put your hand on the Bible, and you know, look, an officer, one of the police, he puts his hands on the Bible, he lied. You know, yeah. he still lied. And guess oh, what? <laughs> and then they go right back, right with straight face, put his hand on the Bible, and he's lying. You know, so a, a caller. Uh, good afternoon uh, to the listening audience, uh, and I appreciate the, 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 the frank discussion that all of you guys are bringing, sisters and brothers are bringing to the discussion. Listen, sister, I want to also interject that uh, before we get into the other topic in the second half, we we have the issue of the 16 JDC that plays heavily into what we, uh, the title uh, "Corruption, <laughs> Racism, Election." Uh, as everyone knows. Uh, the mayor of St. Martinsville is uh, she's uh right now she's watching online and I want to just tell you guys that and she's uh been going through a lot as it relates to how she's being pressured into dealing with an issue that's probably more to, to do with uh, uh being uh, uh, uh issue with her husband not being uh allowed to be by her side at the upcoming meeting. Now, yes. that speaks a lot to uh, what we call white supremacy as far as the, the way it tried to run things. You know, her being the first black female mayor of St. Markville, uh, she's getting a lot of flags. She's being looked at under a lot of scrutiny. We see a lot of the black mayors and a lot of the jurisdiction being looked at, especially the female mayor. Now, uh, maybe you guys want to speak to that. And also the issue uh, within the 16 JDC of Judge Lori Landry yes. finally yes. coming out and speak to that racism within the uh, judicial system uh, mm -hmm. as it pertains to the DA and the judges. And we know we got one judge, and I could say his name, Judge uh, Como, who's been a part of that white supremacy, male-dominated court system for a long, long time. So, and if you guys get, uh, care to speak to that, uh, please uh, feel free to you know, to, to respond again. Thank you so much. Well, I definitely, I definitely wanted, uh, wanted to say that while I was in Florida, right during the election, uh, we were attending uh, a uh, a forum for incarcerated uh, men and women. Uh, people from all over was coming by me and saying, "Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all got uh, that 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 sister that's running for mayor? You know, uh, uh, what you think? I'm, she's going to do it. She's going to do it." And what I would like to, and, I would, and what I would like to say, and I've said this behind closed doors, I've said it on the radio, I've said it in front of people, is that you know you got some of the best intellectual, uh, good women and men, but particularly in St. Martinville. Now, look, every little thing that that uh, Mayor Melinda do, they want to try to go ahead and ostracize her. Every little thing she done, and before that, you had one of the most no good mayor in St. Martinville. Uh, who who done everything uh, illegal and had a chance to retire and retire with full pay? You know something is wrong with that. Uh, you have Judge Landry, Laurie Landry from uh, New Iberia, who took uh, the Honorable Carl Williams' place when the Honorable Carl Williams was ki was killed, and uh, uh, they have the type of love but that right is right, wrong is wrong. You got Robbie Vines, that little no good uh, district attorney. You you, uh, you have Bo Dewey, who had prostate cancer, and it hasn't worked yet. And you have, uh, before that, the culprit of all no good uh, uh, district attorney, uh, Phil yeah. Handy himself, who still today is calling the shot. We just we just got through from having uh, uh, Clerk of Court uh, steal. Uh, got caught stealing some more money. Before the, that clerk of court, you had on the other clerk, clerk of court, Patrick, uh, Patrick Saumier, who, who stole over $150,000 and was charged with theft of $5,000. From that... Mr. Thibodeau is working community service in, at a nursing home. That, that's what I said. Mr. Thibodeau is working... Yeah, okay, and driving a... A, a BMW. BMW paid for, but when you uh, Patrick Saumier, he's at the at the uh, at the not the nursing home, but he's over there. He's in charge. Here you got a crook that stole this amount of money uh, from the 16 JDC. Take the crook and put the crook in charge of uh, this uh, the, the cooking facility. 
You, it don't get no worse than that. It just goes to show you what white privilege does, oh, yeah. what white clout is, and they don't even have to worry about putting on their hood anymore. They just do it out in the open. Exactly. Uh, Sister Mitchell, uh, I want to I wanna address the issue that you're going through. Uh, I've been following it for some time now, the issue with your husband. Uh, I want to tell you, sis, you're a strong queen. You're a strong black woman. You're a strong administrator. Uh, your husband is a strong king. He's a strong yeah. warrior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not used to dealing yeah. with mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. that stand up and speak up for their women. They're used to uh, the type of men that I call Negroes. <laughs> not the, the Negroes that you spell N-E-G-R-O-E-S, but the K-N-E-E dash grows. The brothers <laughs> on their knees trying yeah. to grow. That's the type of brothers they used to dealing with. They not used to dealing with strong black men, fearless black men that will stand up and speak true to them. Uh, the people here in the deep south, especially here in Louisiana, where the hatred and the racism against our people, against our community, has been perpetuated from the time that the first ancestors stepped on these shores to current day and present day, 2019, October 5th. 2019. Sister, keep doing what you're doing. Keep administrating. Keep being the CEO of St. Martinville. The way you overcome those devils, and that's what I call them because they are devils. The way they coming at you and your husband, the way they, they, they've constantly filed complaints on him. Uh, they, oh, had him uh, yeah. they had him over and over arrested. Yes. They're trying to discourage you from advancing and moving St. Martinville and usher in St. Martinville into a new area. And I know you know the history of St. Martinville and yes. St. Martin Parish. It's just like any other parish here in Southwest Louisiana right. in the deep south along these coastal areas where all of our ancestors came in on those ships in bondage. I'm not gonna get into that history, but you're dealing with individuals on that board that the only way they can stop you from succeeding and stop you from pro pro progressing St. Martinville forward and to change the culture of St. Martinville yeah, is to culture. attack you and your husband and to keep you under constant attack. You know, you have to understand this game of life, this game of politics, this game that we're dealing with racism and corruption, you know, these are systems that have been implemented and institutionalized since Willie Lynch stood on the banks of the Virginia River mm -hmm. uh, back in 1786, and he put down his Willie Lynch method. It was a manual how to control your slaves. And these tobacco plantation owners and plantation farmers attended this meeting on the, on, on the banks of the, 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 the James River uh, in Virginia, on the, in the, the colony of Virginia. Uh, they know that if they can continuously attack your husband, that you will be distracted, that your ability to govern will, will, will be hampered and will be hindered, uh, and you will not be able to get any legislation move forward, or you will not be able to get any progress move forward in St. Martinville. So what I want to tell you and your husband, this is a game of chess. They are playing checkers. Y'all have to play chess. You have to be 10 moves ahead of your enemy. You know, right. uh, Shung Su wrote a book called The Art of War. Mm -hmm. And I would I suggest anyone uh, yeah. that is in, in any level of life, whether it's what we're doing in the community and, and with activism, whether it's uh, mm -hmm. in business, whether it's in life in general, read that book, The Art of War. And like Brother Takuna, he so, so eloquently states every time uh, that, that I'm in his presence, uh, I'm in awe by his, by his knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to know your enemy. You have to know the tactics of your enemy, and when you know your enemy and you know the tactics of your enemy, then you can have a uh, you can have a counterattack. You know, when they come at you with those little frivolous allegations, and they come at your husband with those frivolous complaints, y'all have to be three steps or four steps ahead of them. And I know he's your biggest cheerleader; he's your biggest supporter. I yeah, know you're yeah. his biggest cheerleader and his yeah, biggest right. supporter. 
Uh, but understand the climate that y'all are in in St. Martin Parish, and it's going to be a time right now where y'all going to have to put y'all heads together. Y'all going to have to get with the elders in that community, and y'all going to have to come up with a game plan to curtail and curb those council members, those racist council members on that city council that hate the fact, just like all those folks hated the fact that President Obama became the first African-American president in the U.S. history. They hate the fact that there's a, a strong, a God-fearing, a God strong, intelligent, educated sister uh, governing and being the CEO of St. Martinville uh, in St. Martin Parish. So y'all just have to play chess with them, sis, and I guarantee you, you always stay four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten steps ahead of your enemy because they can't think. They have 33 degrees of knowledge, some of them. We have 360 degrees of That's knowledge, right. all of us. That's right. That's right. You That's use true. that 360 degrees of knowledge, sis, and you and your husband think ten steps ahead, I guarantee you the next couple of years of your administration uh, will run smoothly and efficiently, and God willing, the next four years after that, when the people re-elect you to lead St. Martinville again. Yeah. Just be wise. The Bible says you have to be wise as a serpent, yes. yet as harmless as a dove. Yes. So you have to be wise as that serpent, but harmless as a dove, but know that the serpent that you're dealing with, you can outwit him. Oh, well, yes. Yeah, well, yes, and we have three minutes left. Uh, uh, and this is part uh, one okay. of part two. We're coming back for the next right. hour. We're going to take a, mm -hmm. a four minutes break. Uh, uh, Brother Takuna, I mean, you, you can't say too much of anything, <laughs> but not, not in a couple of minutes. <laughs> but I, I would like, I, I was hoping maybe if uh, the camera person could, could uh, get a shot of, uh, of the, these pictures. And uh, Rashawn, if you could read off the names. But when we're talking about corruption, uh, these are all white males that... Oh, you you can read their, their names on. Uh -huh. Yes, we have Tom Deville, Gary Copes, Bob Keaty, Richard Smith, <laughs> Fox McKeithen, Jim Brown, Edwin Edwards, Jack Caldwell. That's just a a, a full. That's just a full of what we have. We're gonna come back and we're gonna finish our topic part two. Please, we enjoy the, the, the participation that we're getting online. We, we enjoy the callers. And we're gonna be out uh, taking a four minute break and come back and, and call your friends, call your enemies, call whoever you wanna call, but tell them to tune in. This is a powerful show. And it's corruption, racism, and elections.
If your business or organization is interested in becoming a sponsor of AOC, call 337-232-4434 or visit our website at aocinc.org. This summer, stack the snacks with United Way of Acadiana and News 15. For some kids in Acadiana, school meals are often the main source of food for the day. During the summer months, many families struggle with hunger and